What's up, everybody? I, like most of you, anxious to get back outside. Spring's finally here. Been doing a little bit of cleanup, and it's time to start putting down some first applications. And one of the questions I commonly see is what can be put down together either the same day or if it's liquids mixed together, what you should put down the same day, what you shouldn't. Well, today I'm going to go over how I think you should approach that and help you make that decision. So last year I started off the season with just some biostimulants, but the weather hasn't cooperated here in the Northwest quite so well. So I, like most of you, am very anxious to get out and put down some granular, some biostims, get prodiamine out. And this year I'm going to start off with a low dose of nitrogen with the 7020 stress blend. Um, at the bag rate, it's about a quarter pound of nitrogen which is really all you need to get started uh, here in the Northwest. Things don't really start to kick off till uh, almost mid-May. So I don't wanna put down too much nitrogen and push a ton of top growth. Um, I'd rather let the root system kind of recover from the winter. There's two theories behind this. You can use either which one you want, whether you wanna use flagship and, and put three quarters of a pound of nitrogen down per thousand or use stress blend. It doesn't, really matters. Stress blend is just a name. You don't necessarily need to use it for just the summertime. I like to put out granular first. Reason being is you don't want to apply granular fertilizers to a wet or even moist damp lawn. The potential for the nitrogen to leach directly into the plant is there and you don't want to end up burning anything. So if you're doing granulars and liquids in the same day, my suggestion is always do the granulars first while things are dry. That way, as you're spraying later, it's not a big deal. The fertilizer's already down to the soil level where, where it belongs. So once you've gone that far, the next thing obviously is I wanna put down some prodiamine and some other biostimulants in that. And there's a lot of questions whether they should be mixed or what you can mix with what. And people will tell you, you know, if you go on like Facebook or something and ask people, yes, you can mix prodiamine with biostimulants. Well, that helps you in that scenario, right? I've been saying this for a while. Alan Hain recently mentioned it in one of his podcasts. You have to change your thinking a little bit. Think about what you're gonna do after you've made your application, okay? With prodiamine, with biostimulants, with granular fertilizer, when you're done, after you read the label, they all tell you when you're done to water them in. Okay. So that kind of helps you decide that, yeah, I can, I'm going to water all these things in anyways. Where the question starts to come in is I see a lot of people lately want to go out and blanket spray herbicide when you read the label. It also says, that that stuff needs to sit and not be watered in or rained on for a period of hours. I mean, each herbicide's different. Sometimes it's till it's dry. Sometimes as much as I've seen, I have some that are as much as 12 hours. You don't want anything getting wet. Kind of think about what you're doing and what you need to do afterwards to help make that decision. So obviously I don't want to go mix something like uh, Triad Select or 2,4-D or anything like that with something I need to water in when I want herbicides to actually just sit on the plant leaf so that they can work properly. Another question commonly comes up is how can I apply all these things at once? If you're using any type of ide, whether it be a herbicide, fungicide, pesticide, you do not usually want to use any type of hose and sprayer for those things unless the label specifically says that they can be applied with a, a type of hose and sprayer. The majority of those ides are not going to have a hose and sprayer application. There's a few on the market, but there's not many. So try not to use hose and sprayers for that. Now, uh, Yard Mastery now offers a new hose and sprayer with the biostimulants. Um, those, by the way, the little one quart biostimulants are on sale this month. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you wanna grab those. Um, or I believe you can even get just the bottle with the hose and sprayer. I found these to be a lot more effective than the orthodialin spray and I've been trying them out for a little bit and I really like them. But don't don't put herbicides in those. Don't put your prodiamine in those. Uh, Pre-emergents are considered a herbicide. Use backpack sprayer for that. 
But if you're just doing biostimulants, um, I didn't want to mix too many into one tank. So I did some in the backpack sprayer and then I did some more in the hose and sprayer. And you can easily do that. That's fine. Mixing uh, different products in the containers is okay. As long as there are things like biostimulants or liquid fertilizers, that's fine. But really, seriously, avoid putting uh, herbicides in these hose and sprayers unless the label specifically says you can do that. After you're done applying your granular, your biostimulants, your prodiamine, make sure you water it in. They may have different watering ratios on them. Generally, it's a quarter to a half inch of water is fine. I just ran my sprinklers 15, 20 minutes because I was expecting rain later in the day anyways, but just enough to get it down into the soil level is more than enough. And five days later, what a difference. I've got to admit, I have not used the Yard Mastery line of fertilizers. This is going to be my first year using them. I'm really excited about it. But to see what something as simple as 7020 can do in five days is pretty incredible. I'm really impressed with the results between that and the biostimulants is really nice. I've got some more products coming that uh, I'm going to try and we'll see how they do. If you're interested in anything I mentioned, in this video, there are links to them down below. They are affiliate links. I do make a small commission off them. It's up to you if you want to use them or not. It doesn't really matter to me if you do or you don't. Um, anyway, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so, and I'll see you in the next one.